Today we're going to review the latest iteration of Cognos Analytics, which is 11.1.5, also known as Cognos Analytics 11.1 R5. Um, so I think we're going to get started now. So hopefully you can see my screen. I'm just this part of the TechD team. So some people that you might hear from when it came to you know finding about this webinar. Uh, my name is Mark Martina. So I'm a system architect with TechD, and I'm going to review the product. Uh, if you have any questions about it, please feel free to ask. Uh, you can just type in your question and raise your hand. Um, and a lot of people that you probably received emails from were maybe Jenny, Phil, or Brad, and they're always available to answer questions. So. So again, we're going to go through the latest iteration of Cognos Analytics. All right. Uh, there is a little bit of a what's new URL, so I've actually included that in the slide deck. Don't have to worry about trying to um, uh, copy that down. When this is done, we're going to send the slide deck to everybody who registered. So I'll actually have it, but it's a good place to go and see all the details of actually what has been added, adjusted in the different iterations of Cognos. So I'm going to go over 11.15. But if you're on, you know, 11.13, then you might want to know what's new in 11.14 and what's new in 11.15. And so it's just a good URL to kind of find all those things. Okay. Uh, one thing that should be, you know, kind of uh, known is that if you download 11.15 when it was first released, so I think it was released maybe a day or two before Christmas, like the 23rd, 24th, something like that. There was a little bit of an issue with it. I don't think it really affected the U.S. too much. I think it was something with the maps in certain locales. Um, and apparently it was big enough that IBM pulled it off the download site for probably about two weeks and then put it back up. It still says it's 1115, but the under the covers number is a little bit different because they did do some code changes. So if you were somebody who downloaded it immediately right out of the gate, don't use that image, no reason to, toss it away, and download the newest version off the IBM website. Yeah. That being said, let's continue. So I want to kind of just review a few things that are new with the product itself. Um, IBM is making a lot of changes between iterations. The iterations are coming out pretty much quarterly now. So 11.14 came out you know, early, mid Q4 last year. Um, you know, 1115 just came out now. So it's usually four a month. Uh, it's hard to keep up with the latest creative version, but you shouldn't, definitely shouldn't go behind by too many. All right, so some of the things that they've done um, is for the dashboards. They made a ton of changes, um, and I like them a lot, and you notice them right away. Um, so one of them is it displays members in the data tree, which is great. So if you're creating a dashboard, instead of bringing over a region, you can literally pick one of the regions below it and just drag it right over. Um, they've also enhanced the drill through. So before, you were able to drill through from a dashboard to report, and that was it. Now you have the ability to drill, drill from one dashboard to another. So you have dashboard to dashboard drills are built in, which is great. Um, you can show and hide rows and columns in a cross tab. That was something you couldn't do before. You can also do customizations on missing values. Uh, so if value is missing, you put in an NA or a zero or something like that now, which Seems simple, but for some reason it was just kind of missing before. Um, there is an assistant which suggests questions based on the context. So that's part of the AI push that IBM has been doing with the product. So Cognos Analytics kind of integrated AI with Cognos in the 11.1 release. And if you ever see anything where it says exploration, that section never even existed before 11.1. So what IBM is doing is constantly adding you know, more and more AI to each iteration. Yeah. Um, next one is custom visualizations. They actually support nested and hierarchical categories. Um, they also support, in case you didn't know it, D3 visualizations. So there's a lot of visualizations that come with Cognos now, but if there's a visualization out there that you want that uses what's called the D3 standard, it's like a Java-based visualization, you can really download that and actually use that in Cognos. So again, they have a ton of visualizations, but if there's something out there, wacky, funky, or very specific that you need that no one's really gonna have, you can still get that visualization. The right. other thing is an enhancement for forecasting. So they actually are doing forecasting and the AI under the covers is refined a little bit better. 
So the forecasting is a lot tighter going forward than it was before. So some of the big changes with the dashboards. Modeling improvements, some excellent things with modeling. If you're not really familiar with it, um, you know, data modules are kind of the new iteration of packages. So instead of framework manager, you can just do everything through the web, which is great because IBM is pushing self-service. So rather than having the business call somebody in IT who has to bring in some database experts to kind of map out the database and publish things, a user can you know, create a data module, which is the metadata layer right out of the gate. They can upload their own files, integrate that as well. And every iteration has been adding more and more features. All right? So some of those are members in the data tree, custom tables that you can create. So maybe some data that you don't even have, you can actually create those tables in the, in the metadata layer. <clears throat> you can show the query information. Now that's something that you couldn't do before. That was something only available in the package. And so now the query information is available in your data module. All right. Redesign the user experience for intent modeling. So again, it's a little bit of the AI you know, being built into the system. So the intent modeling is, you know, um, you know, based upon what you're looking for and what data you're looking for, what we say if things will join automatically with something else to kind of help you out, which is especially useful if, you know, you are somebody from the business, you might not really know what all the keys are that are being used. Right? There's also pack, uh, package enrichment enhancements. So you can actually kind of enrich the data and change the data a little bit when you bring it in. Um, that's something that you couldn't do before as well. Reporting improvements. Um, there's actually a bunch, but I'm just kind of key ones here. Uh, legends are more compact in the PDF and reports. So they've kind of shrunk it down so it doesn't take up as much space. Schematics are pretty slick, so I actually have a small example there. Schematic is great if you have literally some type of image that you want to map out with data. Uh, example, you might have, um, you know, a, a layout of an office building and you might want to just have little maps depending on where you have more or less users or anything like that. That's what the schematics are. So it allows you to use your own image as the base. Okay. Searching and zooming in a map. So when you use reports, you can actually do a search and zoom in on the map. And from the reporting point of view, that really wasn't something you could do before. And apparently I really like the legends because I added that line twice. Um, this one I thought was actually kind of a nice add on. Um, so there's a few things they added with administration, extra data sources, things like that. But one of the biggest thing is now that um, cloud storage is available for your reporting. So when a user runs a report, instead of emailing it or saving it local, they can push it out to cloud storage. And that's done by the administrator coming in here and configuring it. And it's pretty easy. Um, you would select your type, Amazon S3 and IBM Cloud Object Store are the defaults. Those are two with it out of the box. There's also an other, so you can go there and kind of customize it for a third, another third party that you might be using. And then so the admin would set this all up. And then if a client does some type of analysis, they can actually send it out to cloud storage and store the data there. So there's probably a lot of use cases for that. Sometimes if you want to you know, report stored long term, you can easily do that. Some type of data dump, you can easily do that. Making it shareable to other people, you can easily do that as well. That's a nice add-on, the cloud storage for reports. Okay. And we're going to get into the product in a second. Um, one thing that I kind of want to mention, though, is upgrades. Um, we are doing an, an upgrade special now. So if you're on an older version of 11, or if you're on 10, and there are a decent amount of clients out there who still are on Cognos 10, uh, if you're up on maintenance, you're allowed to upgrade the latest iteration of Cognos Analytics completely free. We've created a, you know, just an upgrade kind of package for you. So for 6K, for each environment, we will actually upgrade it, assuming it's, I think, a single server environment. We'll upgrade that um, to the latest iteration and to you know, some regression testing, and that's only a 6K kind of package deal. So there's no hourly rate, it's no X amount of days, it's just, boom, here's your number. And so now there's really no reason for you to be on a really older version of it. We'll get you up and running in, in no time. 
And if you have any questions about it, you feel free to reach out to Brad or Phil. Um, again, I'll send this slide deck out to everybody so you'll have everyone's information, but they'll be able to help you with any upgrades you might have. That being said, I think it's demo time. So if anybody has any questions, please let me know. If not, I'm gonna go into the demo. Okay, so here's my server, and this is the latest iteration of Cognos Analytics. Let's go to here, and about, it says 11.1 R5. That's 11.1.5, and this is the latest version. Okay. If you're on Cognos 10, you obviously know a lot of differences, you see them right away. Uh, if you're on an older version of Cognos Analytics, you'll still see some differences right out of the gate. The recent has definitely been changed and cleaned up a little bit. It's a lot tighter, a lot smaller. Um, there's some how-to and samples that pop up first. Um, there's a whole bunch of different um, links before on the right-hand side, and they've gone. So they've definitely just cleaned it up a little bit. The tiles are tighter, cleaner, nicer. It doesn't just tell you what it is and give you the, the icon. It actually gives you the name now, the last modified. Um, so, yeah, so it looks a lot nicer, in my opinion. Um, there are alerts at the top. Alerts actually is one of the things that um, is also new from the admin console. I don't think I actually mentioned that. So an admin can come in here and actually set alerts if they wanted to. And again, that's new in 11.1.5. Um, a lot of things are, oh, man, it looks like I auto logged out. Let me log back in again. This is the login screen. As you can see, there's no difference. Uh, it's exactly the same as before. And again, you can set up single sign-on too. But as I come back in here, um, you know, again, they're always trying to make the experience a little bit better. So they definitely cleaned up the very front screen. I think it's a lot nicer. Um, everything's a lot tighter from the child's point of view. Um, the alerts, again, it's nice. I had a lot of clients who did a lot of different hacks to kind of get alerts onto the system. Um, either with an SDK or some type of JavaScript. Now there's no need to. The functionality is actually built into the system. And, you know, an administrator can set the alerts. Not any problems. So search, pretty much unchanged from before. My content, still exactly what it was. The team content, which is all the shared content between users. Yeah. And then your recent. So from an actual you know, point of view of you know, moving around, there's not really going to be any difference from the user's perspective. And then on the manage, if we go over here, there is storage, which didn't exist before. So if I click on the storage option, it's going to give me a blank screen because I've never done anything before. But if I create a connection, I can very simply come in here and either go to Amazon S3 or the IBM's cloud storage. I think IBM's cloud storage is actually a lot more reasonably priced or another storage type. And I can fill in the appropriate values, then create a connection. And once it's, can, it's created, users will have that ability to store it in the object store, but you have to specifically give them that option they're not going to get it out of the gate. So that's something that you're going to have to give them. Um, while I'm in some of the, the management section here, um, some of the security things are a little bit different. So if you go into security under Cognos, one of the things that is pretty new, um, but they've added also in, in this version, is all your different analysis users. So you got analytics, analytics administrator, explorer, users, and viewers. And those four licenses equate, or those four you know, groups equate to the actual licensing model that Cognos ha comes with. So a lot of times before, there are all these different consumers and this type of license, that type of license, and it was very difficult to determine who had access to what and what counted as what license, you know, from an author, can it be a consumer, can it be this, everything else it got very complicated. And all those other ones are still here. You know, you got your author, your consumer, your PowerPlay users, 
you know, your different types of administrators. All right. But now they've got the four in here that map up perfectly with your actual licensing model. So if you have three administrators, you can just put them in the analytics administrator and now you're, you're done. Right? It's got the exact same name as the life things. They made things a lot easier for you, which to me was a big deal because it was confusing for people. Um, also, too, this license never existed before. It's called analytics viewer, essentially someone who has read only access to Cognitive Analytics, but they do have access to log in. Um, that license, I believe, is also pretty new. So that one was added mid to late last year. So if you're looking for a license a little bit more discounted that's read only, you know, that's an analytics viewer. So this is not somebody gets things emailed to them. They literally are able to log on the system and run things. They're just not able to create reports, create dashboards. But if you create a slick dashboard, you know, they'll have full access to it for analysis. Right. So if I come over here and let's do new. Again, everything looks the way it did before. Upload files, got my data modules, exploration. So they haven't added any new essentially buttons, but everything has been enhanced. And then of course we still have our other for any of our historical you know apps. I'm using Chrome, so this is all you see. If I was using Firefox or IE, I would also see um, Analysis Studio and Query Studio here. I think one of the other ones. So if I do new, let's say I want to upload a file. I'd come here to salads. I'll have that sample file here, maybe not. Let's see, yeah. I don't have those samples on here. Where are they? Let me grab some sample files real quick. So if I want to grab a few sample files, I can just copy them on the local server here. And if they want to upload my multi tab, click OK. And what happens is Cognizant automatically uploads the file. Um, if you're on an older version, well, if you're on 10, you can't upload anything. If you're on an older version of Cognizant Analytics, you can upload, but you can only upload single tabs at a time. Multi-tab showed up maybe one or two iterations ago. Uh, it's a big enhancement in my opinion, but if you're on an older version, you're gonna have to upload each tab individually. When you do do an upload, it should show up right in here. So there's my upload from today, multi-tab. If I click on the dots, what I can do is I can create a data module or a dashboard right away. Um, I can also replace or append newer features before it was always replaced, but they do have a pen now. And that showed up maybe about two iterations ago. But if you wanted to, you can create a dashboard right away. Um, you can't create a report. As you see, the report still requires that metadata layer. So you either need to use a package or hopefully something newer, like a data module. And then with your data module, you can then create a report. So I'm gonna start by creating a data module. Okay. If I come in here, I'll notice right away, my interface is to, it's a little bit different. It's actually a lot cleaner and nicer. So I've got grid, I've got relationships, which I had before. One thing you'll see though is that it automatically, you know, uses AI under the covers, it automatically, you know, joined everything for me. So if I like it, great. If I don't, I can delete it. If I want to check it, I can check it as well. So I just click on it. It shows me exactly what's joined. Include matching rows only. Or I can just right-click, edit my relationship, 
and it brings up the relationship viewer. So table one is using org. Key, and it's using org key for both. I can do a refresh if I wanted to. And I can see that it works fine. It also created the relationship. So it's an inner join, one to many, which is exactly what it is. So it actually did a really good job. So for every one organization, there's many sales. So I can see it all right here. So I didn't have to do it. It knew based upon the name, based upon the data was in there, that this was a good fit. It auto joined everything for me. So it's designed to make everything a lot easier for the user. So now instead of actually doing all the joins, all you have to do is kind of give it a sniff test, maybe make a tweak or two if you think you need it, and that's it. If I ever want to see what some of the data looks like, I can just go to the grid view and the grid will show me what the data looks like. And this entire interface has definitely been enhanced over the versions. And the few bullet points that IBM releases that says what the enhancements are, they, they definitely give you kind of like the main things, but under the, you'll notice little idiosyncrasies here and there, little things that were cleaned up along the way. Um, and it just makes for a much better experience than it was before. And then there is a custom table. So what you can do is you can combine existing tables to create a custom table. Um, this was something that never existed before, and this is a brand new feature with 11.15. Also, some other things that you can do is you can show query information. So it actually shows me the select statement. Personally, I'm, I'm kind of a more of a, a tech person. I'm used to seeing the SQL and kind of taking a look at it, seeing if I think it's correct or not. And I was never able to do that with data modules before. A little bit of a pet peeve. Um, and now, you know, they've solved all that. So here's the Cogno SQL. If I want to look at native SQL, I can do that as well. There's also the query response so under the cover it shows you exactly what was sent back and forth and how it kind of worked. Maybe not as useful for most people, but the native SQL and then the Cognitive SQL is definitely very useful. Right. Again, completely new. Right. See down. You can actually create a table using SQL. So I wanted to, I can actually type or cut and paste SQL right into the system. Um, usually not a best practice. It's typically better if you kind of use the GUI and do the drag and drop options to bring in your data. But a lot of people, especially if you're converting maybe from another system to Cognos, they like to cut and paste existing SQL. They know it works. They've optimized it. They've done this, that, and everything else to it. Now you can do that in here. So in my opinion, you know, um, the need for framework manager and those packages, every day it, there's just a little bit less than there was before. And this was a major enhancement, a major jump. As a result, you know, I, I always recommend use new users or um, users doing new projects with new, you know, data elements. They just create everything in a data module now. Unless there's a few, like, very specific things you need in, in those packages, um, and there's very few nowadays that you might need, just use your data module. You don't have to worry about installing the Thick Framework Manager client. Any user can do it now, as long as you give them permission, and they're not one of the read-only users. Um, and it's just, it's cleaner, and it gives you more functionality than a package does, because I can upload data into the system, and I can join that data you know, in, my, in my data module. I can also do data sets and join that in my data module as well. And these are not things that are available to you if you use a package. So if you're an existing user, something new is coming up, definitely look at data modules. Long term, you might want to actually start phasing out, or fading out your, you know, your framework manager packages for data modules, because it does give you that ability to integrate things like data sets, which are very important for performance. Um, I'm not saying just convert everything day one, that's usually a lot of work, a lot of effort, but anything new, 
I'm recommending data modules definitely. Um, and long term, you're going to definitely want to convert all your packages to the data modules. All right, and so I can create a table as well. And again, they're trying to make the interface as simple and as clean as possible. So here I just select tables and then create a copy of the table, create a join view. There's different like, categories. Everything's designed to be kind of drag and drop. So this is the new interface that if you've got, you're on the new version, definitely kind of play around with it a little bit. It's designed to be pretty intuitive. Um, so I recommend that you know, everybody kind of just gives it a shot. All right. So I've got my relationships, everything looks great. I do a save as for my data module. I'll put in my regular content. And A A A D M. That's why I know which one it is. So I save it, I'm done. Again, the interface here is pretty simple. If I want to keep this open, I can. If I want to delete it or close it, I just hit X. Now it's closed. I go back here, I've got my new data module. If I click on it, you'll see now that my options have increased. I can create an actual report, which I couldn't do before. Um, you can also create data sets. If you're not familiar with data sets, data sets are cache data on the system. So you have a query that runs for a long time, brings back a little bit of data, but it constantly beats on your warehouse. What you can do is just create a data set. You run it in the morning, run it multiple times a day if you want, brings back that small record set, and now your the reports and dashboards can sit on top of it, and they'll run very fast for the user. Right? The key is fast and a strong experience for the user. Right. But if I come in here, say I want to create a dashboard, I can pick a template, hit OK. And one of the things I see right away is it actually shows me the elements, right? And it has a little more in here. So if I want to bring something in rather than going through and, you know, bringing it all in and then do some kind of filtering or this or that or whatever, I can literally just bring in the value itself. So I can take that value. I go to sales and I can do the sales outdoor protection. And now I'm just bringing in that single value, right? I think it's a lot more useful because there's always something I want to filter out and now I can just pull in exactly what I want. So that's definitely a new enhancement. If I pull a few more things in, you can do that. You'll see that the screen that pops up before the image renders is a little bit different. So this is one tweak they made. Um, and it does seem like the performance is a little bit quicker than it was before. Um, and the AI engine seems to be pretty strong as well for which chart to actually pick. Um, I think they've made some enhancements in between different versions because I pulled similar data over um, in older versions and then it changed in kind of middle versions and now it's kind of, you know, even a little bit better going forward. So, yeah, there's one change that they made. Um, if you want to do a drill through, it's really simple. You click drill through, add new drill through definition. And what I can do is I can go through Pick what I want to drill. Content, let's see. Where am I at? So I can go in here and do uh, samples, dashboards, and you see that my dashboards actually show up. Okay. So before dashboards never showed up, if I wanted to drill through, it had to be the report. Now I've got the option to go from dashboard to dashboard. Right. So I can select some type of dashboard in here, whether it's appropriate or not. I can just pick one, hit OK. Right. 
algorithm and I can apply it to all the visualizations, or if not, I can apply it to just this visualization. That seems to be an, an upgrade as well, though it's not one of the bullet points. So what happens is before, if you did it, it would apply potentially to just that one and not all. Now you can actually be very specific. This chart drills to this dashboard or this chart drills to this report versus, you know, everything, you know, going, right? So it's giving you that flexibility. So they're constantly making enhancements that also don't, you know, land in the, uh, the actual punch list. So I can select one of those and just keep it the same. Uh, let's see, some other enhancements. So again, I have my list of different visualizations. And I'll go to the properties. And here in the properties, I have a whole bunch of different lists. One thing that seems new is comma color and line and symbol color. So you can be very specific on what the colors are. So if I wanted to change that blue to something else, no big deal. I just change it and it's done. I do notice a little shimmy when, occasionally when I'm moving things around. It's only when I have the properties window open. As soon as I close that, it goes away. Um, I think I don't know, maybe it's just kind of a little, a little bit of a glitch in there. But as soon as you close the properties window, everything's fine. So it doesn't really affect anything long term. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, the colors and the different palettes have been a big deal. So now you can easily change that. You know, and it gives you a lot more options as well. The access title color, things like that. If you look at this versus an older version, you won't see nearly as many options. So they're constantly making enhancements and they're pretty straightforward. I don't think I have to go through all of them but like a legend font color. These weren't things that you could really change before and now you can. So they've enhanced the, I guess the usability and the colors and the look and the feel of all the different dashboards. That's a big deal. If I want, I can stick here or I can go back to my welcome screen. My welcome screen, I can go to my data module again. And it is, and maybe this time I want to create a report. Right. And it looks like they've added a few different things here as well. Hit OK. I noticed that this interface seems to have been tweaked a little bit too. I think it's a little bit easier to use. I can't tell exactly what they made, so I'm going from one version to another, but it just seems a lot cleaner, a lot simpler, a lot more intuitive than it was before. There used to be different buttons that kind of went down the side here, and now they just don't really exist as much. But if I want to bring a few values in, you can easily do that. Sales, products, organization, drag it right in. Nope. I think I run the report. I have, again, a variety of different ways to run it. I want is HTML. I can do that. And again, the interface is still very clean, easy to use. I want to sort something, I can sort based on sales, ascending or descending. Easy enough. I can filter out by different areas. So if I don't want North Europe, I can just click filter. Exclude it, and now it's gone from my list. I can then save this as a brand new report, or I can run it again, something like a PDF. And now what I've edited without the North Europe, I go North Europe in it, 
It's now PDF that I can, you know, easily print or download. Right. Now let's close the tab down. I'm back to my original report. No problems. I want to leave here, go back to my content. I can come here and I can do create exploration. That's what it does. It kind of comes into this start screen and where it's, I can kind of enter a column name or I can pick one, right? And sales is always a big one. So if I select sales, it shows me what the source is. That's something it never actually did before. So that little pop up is kind of new. So definitely doing a lot of different things with, with explorations. So if I come in here and I pick sales because sales is important. It'll immediately give me this chart that shows me how things are related. It'll also allow me to choose a visualization immediately. So quantity shipped and sales by product. If I like that, that's great. I can click on it and it's automatically right here. And it gives me information about it right away. So they're constantly changing this, so the AI interface, how it works. Like they don't really mention the bullet points, but the, the flow is a lot better than it used to be. The easy use is a lot simpler. I can just click on that now. Before I had to create a brand new card and drag that over, I don't have to do that anymore. So the system actually works you know, on its own very simply, very easily. It then gives me um, natural language information. So it's not natural language processing, it's kind of just telling me information using natural language. All right. The average value of quantity shipped for all values of product key is this. So that might not be as useful. The average of sales for all values of product key is this. So it's giving me details of the values. I have product key in the system. Product key is a unique number, so it's pretty much the same thing as product. Um, but I could remove product key as well if I wanted to in the data module, and then it'll probably just use product itself and not product key. Right. I can ask different questions if I wanted to, but the interface is definitely a lot nicer and a lot cleaner than it was before. It's telling me what it's actually using. So I want to look at this graph, all the data is here. Um, and the one thing that's nice is if I want to save something in here, what I can do is I can pin it, and if I click on pin, it will actually process the pin for me. And now that pin is available in any application, not just this one. So if I go back to my dashboard, and I take a look at my pins here, there's my pin I just created, and I just drag it right over. Uh, somebody asked a question or two about printing. Yep, if you want to print, you actually have more print options in this version, All right? So under share, that's where printing comes into play. So I can share a link. Uh, I got to save my asset first, it makes sense. So let me just save my new dashboard. A, 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 new dashboard, hit save. Right. And if I want to share it, I click on share. So it'll give me a couple different options. First, it's going to give me the link option. So I can send somebody a link. And if they have access to this dashboard, so if they're a viewer or a user or an explorer, this link will take them there right away. If I want to bed it in an iframe, I can do that. But then if I want to export it, I have a couple options. Right? I can export it to PDF. as portrait or landscape. Right. So this one should probably be more landscape. I export. And now everything's exported right to PDF. So that's essentially printing a dashboard into a clean PDF. And yeah, so you can add the D3 um, JavaScript um, 
uh, charts and visualizations in here as well. So that's completely uh, supported in this version. So, so far, I've seen a lot of excellent enhancements. I haven't really seen anything negative at all. Um, they've done a lot from a feature point of view. They've also done a lot from an actual usability point of view. I find that it's things are a little bit more intuitive. They're working a little bit better. You can drag and drop things over um, a lot better than you could before. Um, so I think those are a lot of the things I kind of really wanted to review today. Um, does anyone have any other questions? Mark, there is one more question uh, that was just posted. Is it possible to combine two packages in a dashboard or a report? Yes, you can do multiples. Um, and you can do it a, a, a couple different ways. So you can create a data module, and that data module can be sourced by your packages. So let's say you've got two packages, and you want to take a little bit from this package, a little bit from that package, put it together. You can actually do that in a data module. And that's completely allowed. All right. So that's one. The other option is here that I can add another source. All right. So typically you only have one source. Well, here you can have multiple sources. So I can add two, three, four packages, a package, a data module, anything I want into the system now. So yeah. So that's not a problem at all. Now, what you're not going to probably be able to do, or what you probably, you, know, you definitely can't do, is so this chart here is made up of two facts and, um, and then a product line, right? You can't take data from one package, data from another package, and put that into one chart because there's no join, right? So if you want to do that, you won't be able to do that by bringing in two packages. But if there is a logical join between the two, you create a data module, put that on top of your two packages, create the join there, and then inside your dashboard, you can have data from two packages that are joined correctly. And so you can have one chart, one visualization with you know, data from multiple packages. But the dashboard will just work, just add another data source. Right. Great, we have another um, you can't, question here from uh, Miguel Garcia. Can I do a custom pop-up with detail info on a data point in a dashboard? Um, so there are pop-ups that come with it. So there's your detail pop-up. So if you highlight over anything right now, the pop-up will show up automatically. To my knowledge, you can't tweak what that is. Um, you can't add a drill on it, so that drill could go to another report that gives you more details. But you can't customize the message saying, you know, this number is high or this number is low or anything like that. Um, but it will give you details of, you know, what the value is, you know, or where it came from and things like that. So a little bit. Half of it. The pop-up works. But you can't really customize it, at least right now. Now, there are new visualizations coming. I mean, not coming, but you can add new visualizations. And I think you can tweak that with new visualizations. So let me, let me double check. I'm going to, I'm going to say a, a strong maybe because I know the new visualizations allow for pop-ups as well. So you might be able to do that too. That's a good question. Great. Thanks. I don't see any other questions right now. Oh, wait, oh, one more came. And uh, how does training work now that there are so many updates? That's a good question. Um, the, the training is going to give you kind of the core functionality, um, unless you do some kind of on-site customized training. We do on-site customized training, so we can kind of do that if you need to see the idiosyncrasies of whatever comes out. If you go online and you do training, it's going to be probably Cognizant Analytics 11.1. And most people who need training don't need to know, like the, their training is kind of more, uh, it's less granular, more all encompassing. Like they don't know how to create a data module. They don't know how to create a report. They don't know how to create a dashboard. So the training's usually a little higher level. Um, it's really when you get down to kind of the ones and zeros that there's a lot of differences. 
I don't, I don't think your online self-paced training is going to catch all of those. It's going to be behind a little bit. Um, but if you do need training like that, we can do some kind of customized training for you. Um, and we can do either generic or we go through all the features this way. Um, because there are workshops that we have, and those workshops are actually version-based. Um, so they're like a half-day workshop or one-day workshop. So that will give you a lot of these little like nuances. Um, or we can do a customized training class for you as well. But your generic training class is probably going to be a few versions behind. It's just going to give you the big things. But that's a good question. Great, thanks. Uh, a couple more have popped up here. Um, is there any hierarchy drill down capability? So yeah, absolutely. Um, good question. So when you, so if it's a cube data source, you're going to be able to drill down automatically, right? Because it, it's a cube and it's going to let you do that automatically. If it's not a cube, you can actually create your own customized hierarchy in the data module itself. So if I go back here, and I go to my data module. And this functionality has been around probably a oh, year or so. I'm not sure exactly when it came around, maybe two years. Um, it's definitely not new. So let's say if I wanted to create a, a custom hierarchy and I've got my organization level one, two, and three, you know, I can click on those three guys, hit my little dots, and create what's called a navigation path. And that navigation path is going to be exactly that. So the navigation path will show up in my data module. And when I click on it, it's going to, be to show me level one. If I click on it again, I double click it, it'll go down to level two. Double click it one more time, it'll go down to level three. So it's taking your, your kind of standard relational database and it's taking that hierarchy and, and making it you know, exactly that, a drillable hierarchy. So if I do OK here, you know, now it's going to just automatically show up in my data module. So I come back over here, you know, home. I think I saved it, right? Let's see. Now I've got navigation paths. And so what will happen is I can come over here. And probably should have brought in something else, but um, what I'll be able to, I'm able to do is I'm able to drill down through here. So let me actually bring over uh, sales and level one. Actually, I have a level one at the top or the bottom. I guess the top. So I've got Go Americas. Then I can right click on it and I do what's called drill down. And you know, I picked the wrong order. I think it's supposed to go three, two, one, not one, two, three. I just didn't know the data that well. Um, but now I'm actually able to drill down to my different levels. So that's actually taking a standard table and turning it into a drill, like a, a drillable hierarchy. But then if you have a cube data source like TM1 or Transformer or even SSAS, it's going to automatically have that functionality built in. So, yes. Good question. Great. Uh, next question. Uh, do you find that users are getting rid of Framework Manager for modeling as they migrate from 10 to 11? It's a good question. Um, people know what they know and they're very comfortable with it. I don't know anybody who has a lot of reports and a lot of packages out there that are throwing away Framework Manager. Anybody who's buying the product brand new that never had 10 is just solely using data modules. You know, if you bought this product a year ago, and definitely if you're buying it now brand new, I'm going to recommend a data module, not even install Framework Manager. But a lot of people are either just sticking with the Framework Manager packages because they don't change them that often, and if it's not broken, don't fix it, or something new they're doing in data modules. But nobody really has this huge effort to change all their packages to a data model because in the end, you haven't gotten that much you know, improvement out of it to justify the, you know, the time and effort it takes to do it. I mean, everything's backwards compatible. So my recommendation is kind of like I said before, anything new, doing a data module, or, you know, if you need to do something like add a data set to a package, instead of rewriting the package, it might just be easier to create a data module that sits on top of the package and the data set, and then you can join them that way. 
So I think you need to start using data sets and data modules. Um, but no one's going to, no one's really doing these projects to say we need to get rid of packages because there's nothing wrong with them, but it's old school and you can't do a lot of the new things. And it's not user friendly, but if it's already there, you know, it's not broken. Most people don't seem to want to fix it. So. Um, um, next question. If you got a couple more minutes here, do you know if yep. a more advanced expand or collapse uh, functionality on a list or cross tab will ever be introduced in your reports or dashboards? You know, for more advanced expand collapse on the list. Um, no, I don't, I don't know. I don't know really what, if that's on the to-do list or not. Um, I've seen people do it using um, like Java in the reports and you could probably still do it that way so that um, you can click on like a little plus sign and then this row expands or contracts. I've seen that in Cognitive reports for probably a decade plus, but that was always using JavaScript. And you can still technically do that. But I don't know if that's going to come out or not. It might. I'm not sure. Okay, and last question we have here. Can we schedule dashboards to be sent via email? Dashboards can't really be scheduled because dashboards are designed to be interactive. So what you can do is you can schedule the reports to be run, um, but you can't schedule a dashboard because the whole purpose of a dashboard is that it's, it's not locked in stone. It's not like a, a PDF or, or an Excel file dump. It's something that's designed to be interactive. So there's really no reason to do that. You can send them a link to the dashboard and then they can do whatever they want, or you can send them a PDF of the dashboard, but I don't think you just, I don't think you can schedule it because most people don't really really want to schedule it. If, if it's something that's that solid, you can create a report that looks exactly like the dashboard if you really wanted to, and you can schedule that to run. You can schedule that to be bursted. But if I go to the properties here, I do not believe, no, it's not an option. Definitely not. And I don't, I don't I don't think it would, you'd want it to be anyway. So if there's some kind of visualization with numbers that you want scheduled and run to everybody as a PDF or, or Excel or anything, I would just create that in a report. Because even though my example didn't show it, you can bring over the same visualizations in the report. So I think you can get them the exact data that you're looking for. I just think you should use the reporting component and not the dashboard component. So, a good question. Great, looks like a lot of good questions today, actually. Do you know if a favorite folder will ever be introduced? Um, I don't know. I think the recent um, kind of got rid of a lot of the need for that. I don't remember the statistic I heard back in the day was no matter how many reports you have, I've got clients with a thousand unique reports plus the average user uses like seven reports. So I think the recent is probably all you really need because if it's something that you've run one of your last 20 or 30 times, it's going to show up right in this list here. And that's going to kind of act like a favorites. Uh, I mean, in theory, they could, they could add something like that. But I definitely think the need for it now with the favorites is, is a lot less than it used to be. They do have the shortcuts though, which you could probably use if you wanted to. So let's say there's three reports you love and you want to see all the time. You can just go in your team content, you know, pick that sample report. All right. And what you can do is you can create a report view of it. There's a shortcut too. And maybe not. Yeah, there's a shortcut. A shortcut. And that shortcut you can put in your my content. So when you go into my content, you have five shortcuts there. Those are your five favorite reports. Between that functionality and the what you've run last, I, I don't see them creating a favorite folder. Um, someone has a question uh, about the weather module. Um, 
So there's weather data out there that IBM sells because they own weather.com. So they own the weather company. Um, so they have and resell the weather data. If you need like some demos of it, we could probably arrange that, but I don't have anything set up in the system right now. So, good question. All right. Um, which browser is my name? Which browser is recommended? Good question. Okay. So if you're using anything old school, using Analysis Studio, Query Studio, you've got to use either um, Internet Explorer, and I think Edge also works now because it is a newer version, or Firefox. If you're not using the old stuff and you're using all the new stuff, then Chrome, Firefox, Internet Explorer with Edge and um, Safari all work. Everybody's got their preference. I've never been a big advocate of the Microsoft Internet Explorer browser. It was awful and locked into your OS back in the day and gave me some real bad taste in my mouth. I'm a Chrome guy. That's what I'm using now. If I had to choose, I would choose Chrome first. I'd probably choose Firefox second. Safari, maybe if I was a Mac user, but I'm not. Um, and I usually put Microsoft kind of towards the end. So if you're using anything new, all four of those browsers work. But if you're going into the, you know, the other section here, and it only shows two because this is all that's supported here. But if I go to a different browser, um, I don't know where your next floor is. Uh, let's see, do I have one here? There it is. Um, hmm. Can't pull up one of my other browsers. I'm not really sure why. Let me see. But if I go to Firefox or if I go to Chrome, it will show more there. So let's see, it's my Chrome. There's Firefox. So I come here, it's going to ask me to log in again. And if I go to new here and I go to other, you'll see event studio, query studio and workspace and then now studio all show up because it's completely supported with Internet Explorer, Firefox, and I think Edge as well it's supported for. Um, but Chrome and Safari are only the new stuff. So if you're doing anything new, I would do whatever your personal preference is. I'm a Chrome guy. I use Chrome. And it works fine. I mean, I use it like day in and day out. All right. Any other questions? All right. Great. Well, hopefully it was a learning experience for everyone. Um, looks like we went a little bit over our one hour, which is fine. Uh, we will send out a copy of that slide deck so you have the few bullet points of what's new. You'll have our information if you need to get in touch with us. Also, the URL to see what's new on the IBM website. It's always a good resource. And that's pretty much about it. I appreciate your time, everyone. And, uh, you yeah, know, happy analytics. Bye.